Welcome back, one and all, to the RimWorld Eternal Winter Series, where, at the moment, my friends, we are currently working on some traps for our defenses at our gate here. But before we really get into it here today, I just want to say that I hope you all had a very Merry Christmas and a very Happy of Holidays. Now, one of the first things that I really want to get a head start on today is a small building project, and to go about building this, we're going to need plenty of stone blocks. So we have a bit of a slow start today, as I just kind of sat around and waited on Rosh to cut up plenty of stone, that way we would have the resources necessary. But even after cutting up all the stone blocks, we still required some steel, so we began deconstructing some of these metallic chunks that fell from the sky. We don't really know what they're from, as we're just simple medieval folk, we would end up using the steel that we had collected from the metallic chunks to build a steel forge. Now, this forge is actually going to be used to create glass, which for whatever reason, the resource used to make glass was steel, so we needed extra. And I know what you're thinking, you're probably asking yourself, and me, Rat Knight, you dumb dumb fool, why would you be building glass? Why would you need windows? Oh my friends, we're not building windows. I mean, we kind of are, but we're building them in the roof. We are going to be building something of a greenhouse. And of course, we would immediately begin said work on said greenhouse. Now, it was built out of basically scraps, many mismatched items. Uh, we have some <laughs> different types of stone, we have bones, we have a little bit of everything in this one. Probably most importantly of all, we have skylights. So these are what we ended up building out of the glass panes that we made. This is actually going to allow sunlight to come in from the top of the building. I'm sure you know how a greenhouse works, but that's just kind of the basic rundown. For our very first crop here in the new greenhouse, I decided to plant some fiber corn. Fiber corn actually yields wood, so I thought it would be a very fitting crop for us. However, we are using a campfire to keep the crops warm, which basically means we're going to be using up a lot of what we grow, but before you make comments scolding me, I ended up changing this design a little bit later. However though, with that being said, for the time being, we would go through and destroy some of these old wooden war machine ruins, that way we would get some timber, and we would use that timber to fuel our fire. This was more of just a test to see if this greenhouse was really worth it. But for the time being, I suppose it's simply a waiting game of sitting around while the corn grows. In the meantime, however, we did end up having a Goralin pod sprout. I immediately went and harvested the seed and we brought it all the way back home where we would actually plant it as a tree. Now this tree was going to have a connection to Rosh who would end up having to tend to it constantly. I'm still, and I was, kind of worried that this would take up a lot of his time, but it would end up being worth it because we could actually try to make some wood makers. Just in case none of you are familiar with what the wood maker is or does, it is a type of of dryad that passively will produce wood for us as long as Rosh tends to the tree and has a connection with it. It was at this point, yes, three episodes in, I had realized that I hadn't really provided them with any means of recreation, so I ended up building them a little cup and dice game. I thought it might be fun and they could bond over it. Or not, you know, just whatever they prefer, I suppose. Unfortunately though, they didn't even have the opportunity to play with their new recreation game as we had a raid from the House Oswin. Now this raid was comprised of three attackers. Two of them appeared to be knights, though it is quite hard to tell if they were truly some type of nobility with a title, but one of them was indeed some type of enchanter. They carried a wand around and wore robes as red as blood. And of course, I'll be the first to say that they did indeed mean business. Now originally, we tried to stand outside of our walls and begin firing at them, but they quickly closed the gap between themselves and us, and we immediately began hiding behind our walls and our embrasures. They began Came a bit too distracted trying to destroy our skull spikes though and one of them began trying to attack us hitting a trap in the process and dying and then we immediately began trying to track down the enchanter and eventually though they ended up getting away unfortunately which honestly ended up really sucking because I had hoped on trying to enslave them or at the very least killing them and taking their destruction wand. Oh well, I suppose. We should of course have more opportunities in the future to try and enslave or recruit some type of magically gifted people into our ranks. But until that opportunity presents itself once again, we will keep on trucking. Not too long after the raid was over with though, we ended up finally having our first harvest of fiber corn, and it really wasn't all that much wood unfortunately. I would say that we barely replenished the fuel that we ended up using for the campfire, and it was at this point I really realized that that option of heating this room was just not viable at all. 
Instead of using a campfire, I decided that we would actually end up using some steel and or iron chandeliers. Now these chandeliers, although they do take some timber to be built, they actually don't require any fuel after being built and they do produce heat. If I'm not mistaken, we did end up building five chandeliers for this room, and as you can see, those five actually kept the temperature a pretty good level for growing crops. Now, I do know some of you guys are probably already telling me that I should have used steam geysers, and I understand that. Steam geysers are part of the landscape, they don't take anything to be built, but the steam geysers around our base are not all that close, and they're not within our walls, except for the one that is actually inside our base. So, in my eyes, the problem is if we build a small farm like this too far from the base when we get a raid or something it's going to end up getting destroyed one of the walls or something and they'll most likely go in and set fire to the crops and we won't be able to stop the fire before it burns all our fiber corn and if that happens the farm that we're relying also much on for wood isn't going to be there anymore plus i wanted to find a solution outside of just using steam geysers i don't know it felt more fun to me a few hours later though we ended up having a manhunter pack this was a manhunter pack of seals and it was less a pack and more of a couple and one of them actually ended up getting into a teeny tiny bit of a kerfuffle with a polar bear and ended up getting eaten so it turns out it's not a pack at all and it's not even a couple at this point we only had one that was coming after us and we easily put it down with a few shots but of course, at least it was more meat for the pile. We ended up having our very first dryad emerge from the garland tree. Now, of course, it took quite a while for this to happen, but it would take even longer for it to actually become a wood maker as it immediately had to go into its cocoon and start gestating or whatever. In the meantime, we decided that we would actually expand our large storage room slash warehouse slash workshop at this point, as the reason that we're actually doing this expanding is we wanted to build a furnace or forge or whatever, that way we can start smelting some ores. The ore in question here is going to be iron ore. We've used up most of our iron ingots on chandeliers and other types of furniture that we've built, and a lot of the stuff from the medieval overhaul mod actually requires iron ingots, so of course we need more of them. After mining out the majority of the iron ore vein, we also would end up building some pretty flooring here in the workshop so that everyone didn't go crazy looking at all the dirt all the time while they're in here. Now while that was going on, you might remember as I mentioned earlier, our dryad, the woodmaker, was gestating and it had finally completed its gestation period and finally became a woodmaker. If you guys have a name for this wonderful little new addition to our family here in the frozen mountains, be sure to let me know. You know, to me personally, Personally, this series is something of a chill, fun series, something we can all just do and kick back and relax, nothing that I'm worrying about, you know, narratively and stuff like that. There's not really a big overarching story or anything like that, so I really want to try to get a lot of feedback from you guys in terms of uh, names and stuff like that, so it can be our little series that we all just kind of enjoy together. Speaking of things to enjoy, something enjoyable that we ended up building was some cooking tools. Now, these required iron ingots and as you saw there Rosh was smelting up plenty of those. The cooking tools as you might have guessed is actually going to speed up the cooking speed at the cooking table. It's only by about 6% but it's a decent little boost. We also ended up using our newly cast iron ingots to build some iron meat hooks. This will help us keep our animal corpses nice and organized and ready for butchering. Probably one of the best things about it of course is you can store several animal corpses on one meat hook. Honestly though the main focus of this episode I feel has been to try and get some good wood production going because of course before this wood was a very scarce resource in terms of renewability of course we have the large wooden war machines the ancient ones that we've been deconstructing and stuff like that but the wood that comes from those is a finite resource right we will run out of those at some point and of course I just want to get a head start on being able to grow our own wood and be able to produce our own wood through the dryads and through through our wood farm. Now with the dryads, we actually have a second one in gestation, which is going to be perfect. Something else that is perfect about our wood farm, as well as the dryads, is they are no cost. I mean, we do end up having to spend some resources to build something like the wood farm. We also have to spend resources like time to manage the dryads and continuously trim the tree and stuff like that. But the dryads, you know, other than trimming the tree, we don't have to worry about them. And with the wood farm, I mean, we've built the chandeliers. We don't 
don't have to continue fueling them, we just have to plant the fiber corn and let it grow. So all in all, I think we've done a pretty good job this episode. I do apologize, I know this is a little bit short, my episodes are normally not super long anyhow, but this one seems a bit shorter to me than normal. Uh, just coming out of the holidays here, I'm just trying to get something uh, finished up and out to you guys. I love you guys ever so much, I will see you in the next episode. Goodbye.